Hello and welcome to Rolling With Reviews. I'm Will and with me as always is Miss Outdoorsy herself. <laughs> Sarah. And today we're doing a review of Earthborn Rangers. So if you want to see our two player perspective and accessibility, check out Rolling With Two Earthborn Rangers. Sarah, tell us a bit about this game. All right. Earthborn Rangers is a customizable cooperative card game set in the wilderness of the far future. You take on the role of a ranger, a protector of the mountain valley you call home. After building a deck that reflects your ranger's interest, personal history, and personality, you'll strike out into the valley, helping, exploring, and completing missions. Each play session is a day, and after 30 days, the campaign ends. All right, Will, so why did we get this? Well, we saw the theme being like 2,000 years in the future. Uh, it was a co-op game. Yeah. Uh, there's no winning or losing. Right. Uh, it's going to be a heavy narrative game. And we like that you could customize your character. Yes. So, so all those things, we backed the Kickstarter. Yep, we did. So what do we like about the game? Uh, well, I personally like the how the environment acts. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is sort of a bot that happens that when you make a test, it'll flip up a card and then you'll do some things and that card will represent a symbol and it'll check every card in a certain order and as cards activate they'll interact with other things mm -hmm. in the environment right. that concept and and seeing that work is really neat yeah it's you are actually as you do a thing the environment is still moving around you it's not static yes and that is very interesting and you personally like the customization of yeah the i liked how you build a ranger the fact that you've got uh personality cards and uh what was it background specialization specialization and you get a little like you mix in a little something else i can't yeah. remember what that was called so the fact that you can really customize and make an interesting dynamic character that fits your play style is really cool. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Yes. That's what we liked. That's that's what we liked. So moving on to what we don't like, and I guess we should pause a moment to say here that we are gonna show cards from the game if we haven't already, sorry. Um, we don't plan to spoil any of the narrative story and we don't feel... I do plan to spoil a little bit, okay. but it's stuff that you will run across like from your first play. Yes. So it's not very far into the game or anything. Right. But we won't tell you much more about the story and the cards we don't feel... The, sh the cards we're going to show, we don't feel spoil anything for the story. Yes. Okay, so we will start with... We don't like us in the world. <laughs> yeah, um... So you build a character, and uh, as expected, you can consider yourself like a level one ranger in this world. Okay, uh, I have all this background, I have the specialization, I get thrown in there, I don't expect to do much, and yeah, sure enough, I don't do much. The problem is where the game changes your deck is with reward cards and reward cards are things that you get for accomplishing missions and and doing neat stuff i don't find the reward cards to be much better than the cards you start with so no matter how far or where you go in the world you still feel like a right level one ranger ill prepared to deal with anything in the world yeah now, we do have to admit, we only got a couple of days in, but from what we saw of the reward deck, I mean, we didn't look through it comprehensively because we didn't want to spoil it too much, although we're not going to play it again. But anyways, we didn't feel that any of them actually made you better, just different. Yes, you could handle different situations in a different way. Right. And I also felt that starting out, we... It didn't feel like we had actually been trained to handle the world because it really felt like you were ill-prepared or ill-equipped to do things and stuff just keeps coming out faster and faster than you can actually deal with things. So you can actually get to a point where you literally cannot leave a location because there are too many obstacles, but you can't actually manage them. You can't get rid of them because you don't have what you need to do that. Yeah, I got into one situation like, all right, I, I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave. So, yay, I succeeded. All right, wait, no, no, wait. This one card says it's an obstacle. And when it says an obstacle, it means you can't travel, which was the thing I was trying to do, which was past it. 
All right, uh, okay, so undo all that. All right, well, then I'm gonna deal with this little thing that's trying to bug me. Nope, I failed, got hurt, got more hurt. The world came to life, hurt me again. Oh, the day's over. Yeah, if you get three injuries, the day is over, no matter what. And so we had our second day, we barely did anything because Will got three injuries in one turn. I think four injuries. I had one oh, already, you did and then I got three, three more, more on top of that. Right. And so most of this world, and I guess we're kind of moving on to what another thing we don't like. Most of this world is out to injure you. It's an obstacle. It, it's just there's a lot of negative interactions. Yeah. And you just, again, feel like you don't have the proper tools, abilities, or anything to deal with it. Yeah. Usually if you fail, it'll tell you, oh, you get fatigue, which means kind of your... Your deck gets a little bit smaller into this kind of quasi discard mm -hmm. or you actually take injuries and you know three of those ends your day uh or they say well then nothing happens and they're like oh well that's kind of like the worst thing that could happen well not necessarily because if you're playing a narrative game and you get to a point where failure is just nothing happens that essentially means you lose a turn and when people say you lose a turn, that means don't play my game. Yeah. We are big proponents of not having lose a turn in games, whether it's outright lose a turn or an effect of doing something. Yeah. Um, because some of these tests require a whole lot of resources to throw into it. Say the challenge is a four. All right. Well, the most I have of my best stat is three energy. Okay. I throw that at it. I still need to throw something else at it to have a chance of doing it. So I'll throw some of my cards to add an approach that matches. All right, okay, so I threw all those in. Then I flip up a challenge card. If it hits me with enough negative, because mm -hmm. the challenge cards themselves, you get a plus one, a zero, a minus one, or a minus two. So it's skewed so that chances are gonna be that things are gonna happen worse for you. Yeah. When that happens, you don't get any of those resources back. Nope. Those are all committed. So all those are gone. You may have something bad happen to you or nothing happens. Well, I told you what happened. You lost all your resources. Yes. So actually the nothing happens is you lost a lot of stuff. And here's the thing with those challenge cards being overly negative or at best zero, Negative stuff still happens because there's that icon at the bottom of the challenge cards and most of the cards in the environment are out to get you. So something negative is more likely going to happen than not, meaning that you are slogging through until you probably end up just being too injured. Because again, if you have obstacles, which a lot of the cards are, and we're just talking about how we played two days. And if your beginning few days are how you can't accomplish anything, it's pretty disheartening. We couldn't leave a location because there were too many obstacle cards that, were, that we couldn't deal with and then Will got injured. And if we had continued to play, those three injuries would have turned into a real permanent injury that got added to his deck. For the rest of the game until I dealt with it in some right. way, shape, or form. So, yeah, it's just, yeah. But wait, there's more. There's no positive oh, yeah. uh, reinforcement on anything. Okay, there's a giant monster out there. Yeah, all right. It's really tough, really scary. Uh, we m met a couple and Sarah's like, I, I don't know. I don't know what we can do to do this because it was going to require a whole ton of resources. And I'm like, don't worry. I think we can do, with, do this. This is where I still had a glimmer of hope. And sure enough, by the skin of our teeth, we dealt with the monster. It left. And that's it. You don't get anything for actually overcoming these obstacles. It's our hard even to say you got the satisfaction of overcoming the obstacle because you're like, oh, thank God it's finally gone until it gets shuffled back into the deck. Yeah, because it's not gone permanently. No. So you're like, I got to get the hell out of Dodge. But then the problem is you get the hell out of Dodge. Well, you're just going to the next place. More Dodge. More Dodge. It's just like, yeah. And everything is about testing. Very few of your cards can you just play to just do the thing. And I'm like... I want to be able to just do a thing because I am a, 
maybe I'm not a hero, like a big time hero, but I'm at least a hero in training. I should have a thing I could do. You're a ranger, so you should have something right. that helps you with nature. But it feels like everything requires a test. And so you And lose. if it doesn't require a test, it requires your resources. Right. And your resources are scant to begin with. Right. And so it just, I lost my train of thought, no. but... Um, well, well, speaking of tests, I am going to talk about the one little spoilery oh, thing. Yeah. So we had a bag, uh, our bit, a basket full of treats, and we could give them to people. Yeah, uh, that was our first mission. Yeah, that was our first mission. And so it's going to be one of your first missions, too. All right. Okay, so we move to the new area, meet a person. Narratively, it says, oh, uh, he gets excited. He actually snags the basket from you, looks down. He's practically drooling in your basket and goes, can I have one? We can't say yes. No, we actually have to do a test, a moderately hard test, mind you, to try to give him one of these biscuits that he asked us if we can have. He can have. Yes. You said we have. We have them. He yeah. wants them. Yes. And it's like, wait, we have to do a test that requires resources that we can fail on when he wanted the darn thing. We can't just hand it over. And we encounter other people that are similarly like they throw an arm over your shoulders like, hmm, that smells good. What yeah. is it? Yeah. And you're like, oh, I want to give you a biscuit. Nope. Sorry, failed. I just can't give you a biscuit. I'm sorry. Because I tried I'm, and we I'm, failed. Yeah, just, I can't. Yeah. I don't have the right energy uh, or I, approach. I approached them wrong. Maybe I walked backwards towards them. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to give them a biscuit, but I accidentally slapped him in the face. Yeah. Accidentally. <sighs> I know what it was. The thing about testing that really bugs me is you lose the sense of the story. Because once you get a little bit of intro story for where you're at... You spend most of the rest of your several hours, if you're lucky to get several hours in, just testing, testing after testing. So you lose track of what's important, of why you're even doing, why am I trying to deal with these animals that are in my way? What am I looking for? Where am I trying to go? I yeah, mean, why is this interesting at all? Why is this interesting at all? Yeah. <sighs> so... I think that's a lot. We just want to also reiterate that we did do uh, cover a lot of accessibility issues in our Rolling With Two video. Briefly, these rules are hard to learn. If we hadn't made it obvious already, this is not an easy game. There's a large new vocabulary you've got to learn. Um, there's a lot of concepts. It's really heavy in those terms. Um, so watch our Rolling With Two video if you want to know more about all those aspects that may make this game inaccessible to you. Mm -hmm. I think though, I think that covers what we don't like about the game. Okay, so ratings? No, who's this for? Oh yes, <laughs> hardcore gamers that like challenges and puzzles. Yeah. You don't get a lot, you get some narrative, uh, which is nice, but for the most part, it's all about using the bare minimum of resources you have to try to survive for as long as you can. Yep. And I do know a lot of people do thrive on that type of game yeah. play and feedback. They don't need anything else. They don't need rewards. They don't need any fuzzy what's it uh, to reinforce anything. They just need the challenge. And for those people, I think this is their bread and butter. Yes. I hope they enjoy it. Hardcore gamers. Though. Hardcore gamers, definitely. Yes. If you're casual or just mildly a gamer, no, you're, you're, you're not old enough to play this. Hardcore. I'm not sure we're old enough to play No, we're this. not old enough to play this. <laughs> okay. We're too young. We're this many. Let's move on to ratings then. Okay, for our ratings, we each have 1d6 worth of ratings to give. One is low, six is high. We give a number, a reason why. Add them together and see what it rolled for us. Sarah? Sarah? Yes? What did Earthborn Rangers roll for you? I feel, I feel like I'm being generous. But I also feel bad at the same time because there's a lot here I really wanted. I will say this game made you angry. It did make me angry. Kay. Will's never seen me swear quite so much yes. over a game. I was hangry a few times, so I will say that's not the game's fault. But it still made me angry while I was hangry. So anyways, I give it a two. I give it a two. I would give it a one. But I will have to say this game has potential. I really think the system itself, the bones of what's here, how you make a ranger, how the environment interactions work is solid. How it all got put together, not so much. And 
I just feel like, I hate to say this way, I just feel like I want to be a hero and I don't get to be that here. And I just like, if I were to try this again, everything about your ranger would need to be doubled. You need double the energy. So when it says on your card you have three of an energy, you'd have six. That way so that one energy is actually a two. And you need to draw, you know, two cards every round instead of just one. And when you do that challenge test, add one to everything because that should be a more positive outcome than not because there's already negative stuff that happens due to that icon at the bottom. We encountered very few positive effects from those symbols at the bottom of the challenge deck. Very few. Most of them are out to injure you. So therefore, your chance of succeeding needs to be a lot higher than negative. So, as you can tell, I'm getting angry again. Mm -hmm. That's it. This version of the game is not one I'll ever play again. If they ever redo the system in a more positive, environmentally way, I, I would check it out again, but not this one. For me, also a two. Yeah. It had so much potential to be amazing, and it fails due to the balance. Um, there's just not enough to go around and everything demands your resources. So you have less to have to deal with more. Mm -hmm. uh, because every round, or, uh, well, when you're finally asleep and are letting the round refresh, mm -hmm. more stuff comes out and it's better equipped to deal with the world than you are. Yep. And it's gonna usually stop you. So Sarah says she wants to feel like a hero. I want to feel like an explorer, and I don't. Mm. I, True, you can't get anywhere. Yes, and and that's supposed to be like one of the key things about this game is go where you want, make your own story, have an exploration of all these wonderful things. And anytime we saw something interesting, I kind of dread it because I knew it was going to come with a whole keeping helping of baggage Yeah, that I couldn't deal with because I... Too weak, don't have enough resources, don't have enough energy, don't have enough anything Agreed. to do with anything. Yeah, and I just also just reiterate, I don't like that all you do are tests. There should be stuff you can do. Where it's maybe, just narrative. Maybe it would take your resources, because I can understand that you need to put energy into an action to represent your effort and your time, but you should just automatically succeed. There should not be a test. The environment should not try to kill you. I, I just think there was a third level there that they didn't tap into that is somewhere between doing a thing completely for free and doing a thing that involves a test. Yeah, the, the whole yeah. game feels like they did balance um, characters towards cards, but more in a isolated environment. Like if that was the only card you were really dealing with, yeah, I can see you overcoming it. It would take a couple of turns. It would take a couple of turns. However, once you get like three rounds in, that's not the only card you're dealing with. Mm -mm. In fact, there are a lot of cards that you're dealing with and yep. they're all working together to kill you. Yes. So, 4 out of 12. Um, Can't recommend this game. No. Not really. There are. There are going to be people that, like we said, hardcore, likes challenge, likes puzzles. Those people, check this out. Agreed. Uh, and it's a neat idea, and I love the environment, how it interacts with itself. But balance-wise and learning the game, uh-uh. It is rough. Mm -hmm. All right. That'll be it for us. Sarah? Yeah? What do you think about the world? I mean, has potential, but obviously humans don't need to belong in it. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously. Yeah, we, we, we do not need to be there to be rangers. The, the environment, the animals, the everything in there can take care of themselves. Yes, we are unneeded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've been <laughs> rolling, rolling with, with reviews. reviews. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to us on the various social media platforms at Rolling With Two. That's T W O. We're on Blue Sky, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Discord, we have a channel on Tabletop Express. Check the show notes for the invite link. If you have time, check out the other content Nanaman has found for you. Because remember, he's rolling with you.